Good morning to everyone who is here. We are both coming to the Thanksgiving service for the life of Mr. Gordon Quinn. Our pastor, Pastor Desmond Clark, will in a little while do opening sentences and then we'll go straight into the service for Gordon Quinn. Let's ask those who are in the house to please. Please be seated so we can effectively commence this Thanksgiving service. Thank you.
blessing in my name to the Lord. Hold the sun, blessing over you, and blessing to your heart. I think of the future. Lord, I think of the past. For I always remember how he died. Death 
death is swallowed up in victory. O oh, death, where is your sting? O oh, grave, where is your victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. And this is our final um, verse. Therefore, we, therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Here in this portion of the reading of God's holy word, we honor it by saying thanks be to God. Next on our program, we have the open tribute. So we have breakers for two open tributes at this time. We take two open tributes at this time, and then we will have the remembrance. Right up there in Arbor Building. 
I used to pack my, my siblings up and we would spend the majority of our holidays with Auntie Chantel. As everyone knew that my aunt was the true vibes master and the life of the party. She was intelligent, she was bold, she was outspoken, vibrant, ambitious, humorous, high-spirited, and full of vim and vigor. In addition, my aunt loved to read. She could read for days on end. She promptly introduced me to her priceless collection of novels written by Daniel Steele, Sidney Sheldon, and many other authors. As I was used to reading photo romance, she considered that those magazines were lame at the time. She said, Mama, you don't start reading until you read those authors. So, I won't tell you about it until you read it and let me know how it goes. My niece, these books will make you cry. And people will think you're crazy. As it turned out, I wasn't disappointed. In those good old days, my aunt used to play games with us and would, and would often be seen sucking her tongue demonstrating our childlike nature, which gave us the impression that we were all of the same age. I feel empty and broken since I will not be able to spend time with my aunt in the near future. Her, contag her contagious laughter and the joy in her voice are gone from my life, but remains in my heart. Nevertheless, she set out on this voyage to find herself and her kids a better life. When she returned, there was, there was anticipation that we could reunite and enjoy similar activities, like back in those glory days. <sighs> Such as cooking, going to the movies, attending graduations, going to the beach, Jamaica was in September of last year and I was so thrilled to see her it seemed like time had passed between it seemed like no time had passed between us and she informed us that she would be staying longer in her next visit my work prevented me from actually accompanying her to going to the beach with her and that um, last day before she traveled back home now all I can all I can do is hold on to their, their little precious memories. Now that she's no longer here. As the songwriter says, precious memories, how they linger, how they ever flood my soul. My aunt was my aunt has only gone on before us. This road is a road that we all have to traverse. I treasure every moment and every memory that I spent with my aunt. I am proud and honored to have called her my auntie. So in conclusion, I beg each and every person present here today to consciously make their calling and election sure, as none of us can guarantee that tomorrow belongs to us. Rest in peace, my beautiful auntie. You completed the course with Walla, a true soldier to the end. Your niece, Anne Marie.
Um, good morning, everyone. Um, I'm Felicia, co worker. She's not here as yet, but I'm just going to go ahead and I'm only human. I'm just a woman. Lord. Good morning. This is a tribute from my mother to her younger sister. And she wasn't able to make it, so I'm going to read it for her. Read it, this tribute on behalf of my mother. Carol Don Chisholm. This is a tribute to my younger sister. I can remember my sister being a fun loving person since she was a baby. She's the only sibling I had a hand in raising her. Me and I was the eldest of our mother's children. My other sister was just a few years younger than I and she was a baby. 
Since childhood, I always took pleasure in taking care of her and changing her nappy. Those days, I used to make her bottles, which was mild. She used to love mild. It was the only thing she could drink. When I gave it to her, she would drink it all and say, more, my Lord. Growing up, she was very keen and intelligent. You could identify it at a young age. She used to have us gather on a bench, whatever was inside, and play school. She was always a teacher. Thank you. 
while in Ibn he returns for the hands that were able to give his wife. We know a blessing upon that which was collected in Jesus' name. Amen. We now move to our poem, which will be done by Shanelia Everett, granddaughter of the deceased. Poem by Shanelia Everett, followed by the eulogy. Is it well with you? 
Is everything going as it should? The truth of the matter is, for every time we are asked this question, we either lie most of the times, or we are tempted to lie. But how can we be okay on this particular day in Earth's history, when we lay to rest one that we love so much? How can we be okay when a family mourns the loss of a loved one? How can we say that we are okay when every time things seem to be getting better, things take a turn for the worse? How can we be okay when we expect that our loved ones, though we know that nobody lives forever, we expect that they will be with us for longer than we have them. How can we say that we are okay in the midst of the reality that in the midst of life there is death? And you are here today, but gone tomorrow. How can we be okay? The passage before us is one that speaks volumes for loss. And though the passage doesn't, doesn't talk about the, the loss of a of a female, the loss of a daughter, granddaughter, niece, aunt, sister, mother. It doesn't speak about the loss of a female. It, it nonetheless talks about the loss of life. The Bible tells us in 2 Kings chapter 4 that there are two women that Elisha is contending with. I introduce to you the first woman. She is a poor woman. She has just lost her husband. But with the loss of her husband comes something else that she must deal with. He leaves her not only to mourn, but he leaves her with debt. She owes people money and she doesn't have the means to pay her debt. And so she meets Elisha on this day and she calls him, she, she tells him, she says, Man of God, my husband is dead. And not only is he dead, but but he leaves with it, leaves for us a debt to pay. And the person that we owe is coming now to take my sons as slaves because we cannot pay this debt. Elisha asked her the question. He, he says to her, what do you have in your house? She said, all I have is a little oil. He says to her, get the oil and get some containers. He prays and, and he tells her, he says, fill the containers with oil. Fill everything that you have. And, and so she begins to fill one. And she fills that one. And, and then she fills a second. And she continues to fill the containers with oil until all the containers run out. He tells her, he says, sell the oil. Pay the debt. And after you pay that debt, Thank <laughs> you. 
She has everything, brothers and sisters, except a son. She has no children. And so Elisha prophesies to her and tells her, about this time next year, you will have a son. She didn't quite believe him, but, but true to the prophet's word, she had a son the next year.
it will be fine. But I want to also tell you that it will never be fine here. It will never be fine here on earth. I wish I could tell you that this will be the last funeral we will ever do. I would love to tell you that this is the last loved one you will have to bury. I wish I could tell you, brothers and sisters, that you will never have to see another loved one in a casket. But it is just not true. And though it will be fine, it will never be fine here. You see, there's a decision that we all must make. There's a question we all must answer. And the question is simply this. When the role is called up yonder. Where, oh where will you be? When your time rolls around, where will you be? I know some of us still believe that we will live forever here. But the Bible tells us otherwise. I know some of us still believe that, that we have nobody to answer to except ourselves. But the Bible tells us otherwise. I know we believe that we can just live. And there are no consequences to our actions. But here is another pattern before us that tells us. That the Bible is true when it says it is appointed unto man once to die. But after death, we must give an account for our actions. The woman has a dead son at home. But she results in herself that it will be fine. Not because of anything within her, but because of everything she knows that God is. Mourn, if you must. Cry, if you must. Your loved one has passed. Grieve because you have to. But understand today that God is still in the business of comforting broken hearts. And as long as you put your hand in His hand, brothers and sisters, it will be fine. Amen. This time, we are going to backtrack a little bit. Is Shanelia Everett here? Is Shanelia here? All right, Shamilia Everett, there's a poem by Shamilia Everett. And the eulogy, Felicia Lester, is Felicia here? Okay, Felicia, you are after Shamilia. All right, so we will have the poem by Shamilia, and then the eulogy will be read by Felicia Lester. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
How long will she be with you? She's not that far. She's not far. Whilst we wait for Felicia Lester to get here with the eulogy, I'll open the floor for one additional open tribute.
course, can just help you sing.
Good morning, family, families and friends. This is the eulogy of my mother, Lorna Pinoff. Life of my mother begun on the 13th of March, which is today, the year 1972, which she was born. She was born at the Victoria Jubilee Hospital. Unfortunately, that's where she also died. All right, good morning. Good morning. Let's hear a good morning again. We're alive, we're aware. Let's hear a good morning. While we, we understand the, the circumstances, it's our daughter, of course, she's gonna be feeling it. Uh, and so I'm privileged to be reading the eulogy on, on behalf of the family. Good morning, family and friends. The life of my mother begun on the 13th of March, which is today. She was born in 1972 at the Jubilee Hospital. Unfortunately, she died at the very same place where she was born. She attended the Queen's High School in Kingston. Having been granted a scholarship from England because of her profound educational achievement. After high school, she got her first job at the Registrar of Companies. She then went to work for the Cable and Wireless Company now Flow, where she was appointed a telephone operator. And she spent many years at this job before she was made redundant. However, she did, not, she did not stop there. Knowing my mother, she has always been hardworking and ambitious. She's a lady who is described by many as having put attributes of greatness and integrity. 
She always wants to reach for the star and always wants to achieve her goals. My mother migrated to the United States of America in the year 2004. This was an attempt to further her ambition as well as to be able to assist her family members. She attended college overseas where she studied technology. My mother is always and can be described as a skillful lady who is always willing to learn. She got a job as a real estate agent as well as she was appointed a notary member of the public. Her favorite music includes one by Anita Baker. She is also a lover of poem, the poet. I'm seeing Louis Bent here was among her favorite dub poets. She was considered a behavioral health technician and she also was a real estate agent and of course a notary member of the, the public. Lana Pinnock was very independent. She was also very ambitious. She's described by many as also being dedicated and she was a successful mother. She also supported her family and she was very loving, caring, kind-hearted. Ladies and gentlemen, this describes I, Lorna Pinnock. I thank you. such a mark that will see us be considered faithful to go home and live with Jesus. At this time, we will be getting ready to sing the recessional hymn. We're going to ask the Paul bearers to make yourselves ready. As we sing the recessional hymn, when we get to the second verse, we will begin to, we'll begin to leave from this place of worship. We will leave in the following order. We will have the platform party leaving first, followed by the casket, followed by immediate family members. Then all else will follow afterwards. We'll follow in that same manner to the place of interment. Just before we sing the recessional hymn, we are going to have the prayer for the bereaved family. As such, I'm gonna ask that the family remains seated while the rest of us will stand. Family, remain seated while the rest of us will stand for the prayer for the bereaved family. All family members remain seated. The rest of us will stand. Father, Father, we come to you once again at a time where there are broken hearts, time where some are grieving. We come to you, Father, at a time where there is none other that can help in the situation like you can help. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for never turning us away when we need you. We thank you for hearing us when we call. We 
We thank you for wiping the tears when they are dry. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for being God to us as no one else can. We come this afternoon at this Thanksgiving service.
try to get a little bit of a little bit of a Yeah, 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 yeah. 